as we have gone through the Foster book, there are some things that he would recommend that we fast from that might feel outdated, but they have some modern day equivalents. And so what we're doing today is we're looking at the heart of the reason why we would fast from certain things and how that can make an impact in our lives. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand his will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus that's one word all caps to get your discount there are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started again head to shehears.org and you can find the bible study on the resources page Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast I'm your host Rachel Grohl and today we are continuing our discussion on fasting You don't want to fast just to do a fast just because you know everybody else is doing it in your church or or whatever. Really, the whole point is for you to hone in on what God's saying to you. Our church did a 21-day fast. We did not do that. We did a one-week fast. We always do a one-week fast. Um, But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't do a 21-day fast in other areas. Uh, I've done that in the past with social media. Um, You know, we've done that with TV. We've done a TV fast, all sorts of things. Um, I think when we say spiritually, it's a good thing to fast. I want to make sure that we're clear though, that it's not a commandment. Um, it's not like if you don't fast, it's a sin. And I also think it's an indicator of spiritual maturity. I would not necessarily encourage brand new Christians to fast. I think it's something that probably comes down the line a little bit when you are trying to deepen that relationship with God. But I'm not, I wouldn't discourage anybody either, but I would, I would just caution against having this mentality that if you are not fasting, you're sinning. Um, I believe it's Matthew chapter six where Jesus is addressing, um, the topic of fasting. And he made the statement, he said, when you fast. And so for me, if Jesus is referring to a fast as when you fast, in my mind, that means that Jesus is assuming that as a believer, you will be fasting. And if Jesus is assuming a behavior out of me, I want to do that behavior. Now, was he saying you must fast? No. He wasn't saying if you don't fast, it's a sin, but he's assuming, you know, when he's speaking, when you fast. And I want to be in a place of being in line with Jesus's assumptions about me. And that's why I fast. Um, So in the, in the foster book, uh, there's a list that he makes and 
I just think it's helpful to kind of go through some of the things that he recommends fasting from. Uh, the first thing, and I didn't think about this at first, but it makes so much sense. The first thing he says that there's a need to fast from is from people. And, you know, I, now that I think about it, it makes so much sense, but I never would have thought of that on my own. He says, and I thought this was a really good line. He says, we have a tendency to devour people and we usually get severe heartburn as a result. And I was thinking that there's probably two elements to that. One is certainly like a people pleasing type element. Like we, especially as women, I feel like we consume other people's thoughts and feelings towards us and we internalize that and we sometimes allow that to determine our self-worth. And so that's obviously um, a behavior that we need to to fix. But then there's this other side. And if you have served in any capacity, if you're in church leadership or even depending on what kind of job you have, if you have a people-oriented job, I know for me that I did not recognize the need to fast from people when I was acting uh, in in family ministry. And there was so much to do. It was so busy that there wasn't the ability to fast from people. And um, I look back on that season now, and I think that's probably why I went into almost a two-year fast from people, because after a decade of, of very busy, in-your-face, super intense ministry, I never fasted from people. And it, it did, it gave me heartburn, you know, in more ways than one. And so, um, I think if you are in a public service industry, if you are in any kind of job that requires you to, uh, be around people, I think fasting from people can be a really good idea. That idea of solitude, uh, and just really kind of listening to God's agenda over our own agenda. I think that's really helpful. Another one that Foster recommends is fasting from, well, he would say media. I would say TV. And I think for my own life, I specifically have to fast from the news. I don't really watch junk TV. I don't watch garbage TV. So that's not a big deal for me. But the news is something I consume and sometimes when I consume the news, it it, it takes me to a bad headspace um, because I'm a justice warrior. I'm very much, uh, you know, I'm going to speak up for the ones that, that don't have a voice and that kind of thing. And lately the, the news has just been so consuming and so disheartening and, you know, okay, then there's another variant and, you know, what about this? And, you know, I just, I, I, not that as believers, we shouldn't be engaging in prayer for what's going on in our culture and our world. But that's not what I was doing. I was just wa watching or reading the news and then ruminating on that to the point of unhealth. So I very often will fast from TV and news and you know, to the point where like maybe once a week I'll check in just to kind of see, oh, you know, there was a you know, a typhoon or something somewhere so I can pray for those people. But I, I will, I don't watch the regular news anymore. Um, and I, so, but whatever that means for you, you know, some people are super addicted to different TV shows that they know they probably shouldn't be watching. Um, there's some just garbage on TV now and Netflix and things like that. I like Netflix. Don't get me wrong, but there's just some garbage on there. So that's, that's, I think a really good point. Another one he mentions is fasting from your phone. And I think, when at the time when he wrote that book, that meant something completely different than what it means now. But I think it's still probably even more relevant now, fasting from the phone. I, I will tell you that at Christmas time, we put up a little sign in a basket and we ask people to leave their phone at the door because it, it it's so sad to me when people are in a room full of their family and their friends to celebrate, whether it's a birthday or Christmas or whatever, and people in the room are on their phones. Um, they are craving relationship th through their phone, but they're not engaging in relationship with the people that are in the room. And so my children, they know that when we have guests over, the, the phone is, if I see the phone out, I take it away. Um, we want to make sure that we are engaging with people first. And so I think the phone, there's such a, such a phone addiction. There's some people that have two phones, you know, there's such an addiction right now that I think that's a really valuable one. Um, another, the next one he mentions is billboards and 
you know, at the time he, he mentioned how he had, I think an hour long commute to work and he had spent the whole hour consumed with the things that were on the billboards. And, you know, I live in a smaller rural town, so we don't really have like the billboards we have is advertising insurance. It's not like whatever, but I know that in bigger cities, there are billboards that, um, have sometimes inappropriate things on them that they can kind of lead you down a path. And so, but, but I think really what is the heart of that? The heart is, um, what are you focusing on? Maybe even like during your drive to work. And so that might be, um, podcasts or something like that. I think a more important and relevant thing in our culture is probably social media. Um, social media is really the billboards of our generation because that's how advertisers get, get to you. And they've created again, an addiction. Most of us, it's on our phone. Sometimes it's on the computer, but there's an addiction there. So I think fasting from any of those kinds of things that, that are, they're putting those images in front of us would, would be good. I think the key here is to pray about that in your own life and evaluate what things are distracting you from God, what things are being used by the enemy to keep you from growing in a relationship with the God, with God. And, and that can be a myriad of things as we've talked about, but let that be spirit led. And again, I think the goal of us breaking down this idea of fasting into these bite-sized chunks for you to think through, pray through, think about is for you, for me, I just want to start the dialogue between you and God. I just want this to be a conversation starter between you and God. And then what you decide, what he lays on your heart, that's between you and him. My goal is really just to point you in the direction of growth, of spiritual growth. Because again, the most common question I'm asked is, how do you hear from the Lord? Well, this is how. The spiritual disciplines is, is how. So let's pray. God, thank you for my friends that are learning about fasting this week and all the different ways that we could fast from different things that are taking away us taking us away from you. God, I pray that even now you would reveal to my friends perhaps some things that they could lay before you as a way to fast and hear more clearly what it is that you're saying to them. Lord, I thank you that even though I don't know what it is, I don't need to know what it is because you are a God that speaks individually to your your people and you long to have that kind of intimate relationship with them. So Lord, reveal that to them in their own lives. Help them to start to recognize you when you're speaking. God, I thank you and I praise you for the way that you continue to reveal yourself through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll talk to you tomorrow, guys. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. Hey, Dr. Bill Sinyard here with the Gospel Rant. You know, there's lots of Bible studies out there, but only one rant. Our passion is to help frustrated, beat-up Christians hear the music again. Maybe you? Come join us. The Gospel Rant.